the transformer neural network can be used for classification and question answering. At the core is the multi-head attention network. In this video, we will show the attention network's algorithm in action. The question encoder, answer encoder, and decoder are all attention networks. They need embeddings as input. This can be the question embedding or the answer embedding. Let's see how this all works. Words are tokenized and assigned vectors stored in embeddings. Embeddings connect to linear layers, which are single layer neural networks that project words. We have two types of embeddings, the question embedding and the answer embedding. We apply positional encoding to take into account positional information for each word. The question embeddings provide input to the question encoder, where it creates three projections. The answer embeddings provides input to the answer encoder, where it also creates three projections. The output of the answer encoder provides input to the decoder, where it creates one projection. The output of the question encoder provides input to the decoder, where it creates two projections. Essentially, the encoders gets its input from the embeddings, whereas the decoder gets its input from the encoders. These attentions apply a series of transformations on their input. These transformations are broken down into multiple simultaneous projections. From an implementation standpoint, the input matrix is broken down into multiple heads, where projections are independently applied. Inside the attention network, input matrices contain vectors, which are depicted here as projections in 3D space. We connect the input matrices to three different linear layers. The first linear layer produces projection 1. Another name for projection 1 is the query matrix. For the question and answer encoders, the input matrix is the question and answer embeddings. If we're in the decoder, the input matrix is the output of the answer encoder. The second layer produces projection 2. Another name for projection 2 is the key matrix. For the question and answer encoders, the input matrix is the question and answer embeddings. For the decoder, the input matrix is the output of the question encoder. The third layer produces projection 3. Another name for projection 3 is the value matrix. If we're in the question and answer encoder, the input matrix is the question and answer embeddings. If we're in the decoder, the input matrix is the output of the question encoder. We will apply a dot product to projection 1 and projection 2. We will see this process when we superimpose projection 1 and projection 2. The dot product produces a score matrix. The score matrix finds correlations between words in projection 1 and words in projection 2. For the answer encoder, we will apply masking on the score matrix results as we're only interested in the correlation between the word and the words to follow. In all cases, we will be normalizing and applying softmax on the values of the score matrix. Next, we will apply a dot product to the score matrix in projection 3. We see this process as we superimpose projection 3 and the score matrix projection. The result will be another transformation. The resulting vectors will be stored into the encoded matrix. These are results derived from attention head 1. There are also projections happening in attention head 2, as well as attention head 3. The next layer will create the interaction matrix. This will allow for the interaction of the attention head results. Next, we will connect the interaction matrix to a fully connected neural network. This will have an inner layer with higher dimensions to allow the attention network to explore features in higher dimensional space. This will produce an output matrix. 
the interaction matrix results will be added back to the output matrix. This is called the residual learning. It prevents loss of information and allows the network to extend to many layers. In the decoder, we may also add the input matrix to the interaction matrix results to enable residual learning. Zooming out, we see that the different heads of the attention network is performing all operations we just described. At the end, all the results of the different heads are concatenated together to form the attention heads output matrix. This concludes this video. Thanks for watching. See you soon.